Good morning, class. Seems strange, doesn't it, to be having Sunday school in our homes? And I uh, hope if your parents are watching that they'll be blessed too by the lesson that we're going to do. We, uh, we just came off of a study from Joshua, and then we had three uh, lessons in the series of, of uh, the resurrection. And now we're back to the, the Old Testament and we're going to be in the Judges. Before we get into the session today, let's just ask our Lord to, to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to come before your presence. And even though we are not gathered as two or three, and you promised that when two or three are gathered in your presence, that you are there. But we know that we are here because of necessity. And so we pray that as we get into our lesson today, that you will just encourage our hearts and strengthen us and help these young people to come to know you as not only the, as their Savior, but Lord, as their Lord, as they present themselves to you, a living sacrifice. So we pray that you will bless this service this morning and bless our, our study. And we pray that you will guide through the rest of this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, we've just been studying about Joshua. Moses was dead. Joshua was an old man now, and he encouraged the, the, his people to, to follow him. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the children of Israel, the, the nation of Israel, all of them said, we will do the same. And he wrote it down on a stone, and they made a covenant, and and sure enough, as long as Joshua lived, the nation of Israel followed the Lord and Jehovah. But then Joshua died. And now there was no leader. And the book of Judges begins with the idea that uh, every man is, did that which was right in his own eyes. When we think of the scripture, when we think of the book of Judges, it's not really a really book of blessings, but it's a book of of defeats and victories and defeats and victories. And what I want to do is I want to read just a passage to you from uh, Judges chapter 2. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly long passage, so I'm going to break it up. And I, I'll tell you the scriptures, but if you want to get your scriptures out and read it with me, uh, we're going to start in chapter 2, and I'm going to read in verse, in verse uh, 20. And we'll start out. And then the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because this nation has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and has not heeded my voice, I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died. So that through them I may test Israel, whether they will keep the ways of the Lord or walk in them as their fathers kept them or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out immediately, for he did, nor did he deliver them into the hands of Joshua. So Joshua told them, now that I have divided the land among you, you are each responsible for taking care of the Canaanites that are in your land. Go get them. And there aren't too many that, that followed that advice. In fact, I'm going to go over chapter 2. And I'm going to look at verse 13. For they forsook the Lord, and they served Baals and Astaroths. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, so he delivered them into the hand of the plunders, who despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. And wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord said, had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them. And they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but they played on faithfully with other gods and bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way in which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of the Lord. They did not do so as the Lord, as their fathers did. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity with their groaning 
because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers by following other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They did not cease from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways. And that's the picture of, of the whole book of Judges. It's a, it's a sad picture of a nation who loved the Lord and followed him with all their hearts. But then when they lost their leader, it was all gone. Now, there were several judges, and we're going to, we're going to look specifically at, at one judge. Now, you've, you've heard of some of the judges like uh, uh, Ehud and Shamgar and, and Deborah and Barak and, and even Samson. What a horrible example of a, of a godly man. I mean, he was not. But the man that I want to encourage you to think about today is Gideon. Gideon was a man who was, uh, he was of a, a large family. He was uh, the, the last of the sons of Joash, who was uh, in uh, the tribe of Manasseh. And uh, the things around them at that time were, were really, really desperate. For instance, it was a time when Israel went back into idolatry. They created their own gods or they worshiped the gods of the, of the countries uh, or, the, or the nations that, that were in their land. They allowed the nations in their land to destroy them. And this seems to be the sad picture of judges. They uh, disobeyed the Lord, Lord and they went into idolatry. The Lord allowed them to go into bondage. And then, because of the bondage, they repented of their, of their sin and cried to the Lord, and the Lord sent them a judge. He delivered them, and as long as the, George, or as the judge lived, they had rest. And then the judge died, and then they went right back, and it just seemed to be like that. Well, at the time of Gideon, the Midianites were the ones that were oppressing Israel. The Midianites were a tribe on the southeast side of the Dead Sea just to the south. And they had become allies with the Amalekites. Now remember that Israel had already destroyed or captured or defeated the Amalekites, but here are the Midianites and the Amalekites. And what they did, rather than in their armies, they swooped up through the land and they would come, especially at harvest, and they would destroy the harvest of the, of the Israelites. They would uh, go into the land where, where uh, Gideon was, and they would harvest the crops for themselves, and the rest that was left they would burn and destroy. And they would just live on the land, and, and the Israelites began to run, hide in caves, hide anywhere they could. In fact, when we see, when we see Gideon, he's threshing what little wheat he had in a wine press. It was a place... Uh, uh, circle of stone where they would press the wine but of course there was no there were no grapes there was no harvest and he was in there threshing what little wheat he could get of course there's no wind It'd be hard to thresh wheat when there's no wind but he was there one day threshing wheat when all of a sudden he saw a man close to him whether he was sitting or or standing we are not tell, uh, told but the picture shows this man sitting there. Now, the man, of course, had wings. Well, of course, we know that, that the angels didn't really have wings. Uh, at least uh, when, when Joshua saw the angel of the Lord, he was just a regular man. He was a grand man. When Abraham entertained the angel of the Lord. So the, we, we think it's the angel of the Lord. It may be the uh, pre, uh, pre New Testament a uh, picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it, it says in the scripture, the angel of the Lord. And later on, after Gideon realized what had happened, he said, I have seen the Lord face to face and I will die. Well, he looked up and there was this angel and the angel said to him, oh, mighty man of God. Who, me? He said, who, me? Yes, I have chosen you to deliver Israel from the Midianites. 
What do you mean, Lord? <laughs> I am the youngest of my fathers. I am just, I am, I am no soldier. And the Lord said to him, nevertheless, I have chosen you and I've given you, I'm going to give you power and wisdom and you are going to deliver the Midianites, deliver Israel from the Midianites. Well, I do, I believe at first Gideon didn't realize who he was talking to. And then he really looked at this man and he realized this was somebody that maybe he was more than a man. So he said, stay here a minute. I, I've got something to do. Stay here for a while. And the angel said, I will stay here. So he ran back to his humble home. He cooked up a batch of meat, probably a goat. He brought the broth. He made up a, a batch of bread, unleavened bread, by the way, because God always required unleavened bread when they were brought as a sacrifice. And he, he brought this, this meat and this broth and this bread back to the, the uh, pit. And uh, he said, uh, what do you want me to do with these? Show, show me some, some proof of who you are. And the angel said to him, put that on the rock. So he put the meat on the rock and the bread on the rock. And then the angel said, pour the broth over it. Well, he pulled the broth over it. Of course, nothing would, would burn. And then the angel of the Lord took a staff and put it on that food and it burst into flame. And the next thing Gideon knew, the angel was gone. Wow, his heart beat within him. Oh my goodness. So he said, oh, I've seen the face of God. I will die. But a voice said to him, no, you will not die. I've chosen you. Well, Gideon realized then, and <laughs> so sorry, I should have shown you this. There's, there's the flash of fire and, and on the food. And uh, Gideon said, well, if this is the way it is, I'm going to ask the Lord to show me a sign. Now, this, at this time, there were some other things that he had done, but basically I want to show you what the test was that he asked of the Lord. He said to the Lord, he said, if you will do this for me, I will know that you have called me to be the deliverer. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to lay this fleece. See the fleece? See the fleece? The, the sheep fleece? I'm going to sh sh put the fleece on the floor. And when I get up in the morning, I would like to see the fleece uh, dry or uh, wringing wet and the ground all around would be dry. He went to bed that night, got up the next morning, walked back to the, to the uh, wine press, and, and sure enough, the, la the ground was all dry, but when he touched the fleece, it was wet, soaking wet. He wrung out a big bowl of water from it. Well, that was one proof. He said to, well, Lord, would you please not get angry with me, but would you do one more thing? He said, if I put the fleece back in the morning, can the ground be all wet and the fleece be perfectly dry? And so he went back that night, went to sleep. The next morning he came. And as he walked into the wine press, he was sloshing in water, getting his sandals wet. But he looked at the fleece and it was perfectly dry. And that's when Gideon knew that God had chosen him to deliver Israel from the, de from the Midianites. Now, he was just a normal guy. He was a man just like me or an individual like you kids or your parents. There's nothing special about us, but God has a purpose for our lives. And if we submit ourselves to him, he can use us. You say, well, how can God use me? I'm just a, a student. Ha. Well, uh, do you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior and you have accepted him as your Lord and hopefully your master of your life, then the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And according to Paul, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You can read your Bibles. You can let the Lord talk to you. 
You can pray and talk to the Lord. You can help others. Uh, we live in a time when people really need help. People are really uh, uh, scared and fearful. We can tell them the Lord has all of this in, in control. Don't worry about it. If you accept him as your savior, the Lord Jesus will take care of the problem. He'll give you the peace that you need. It, 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 we may still have hard times, but at least he'll be there with us. You can tell your friends about the Lord and what he has done for you. That's what a witness is. Just tell the Lord, tell them what God has done for you. He's forgiven my sin. He's cleansed my soul. He's given me a new life and I will live with him eternity. For, for you, church. Just think. Think the possibilities. Think of what a man, what a man chosen by God and empowered by God can do. And you, as young people, empowered by God. Think of whatever, all the things you can do. Gideon was just a man, the youngest of his family. But God chose him to use him. And you and I can be chosen and can be used as well. And if you haven't known the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I encourage you to do that today. Just bow your head and confess your sin to the Lord and say, I, I know that you are my Savior. I, I know that you died for my sin. And I now accept you as my Savior. And I want to live for you for the rest of my life. Father in heaven, we pray that you will just take this your word and strengthen us together with it. And thank you for the blessings that we have in spite of the hard times we're going through, this pandemic, the viruses. You have protected us and you will protect us according to your will. Pray for these young people that they will love you, serve you like Gideon. They will do what you, what you call them to do. And we thank you so very much. Thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus, in his, his precious name, we thank you. Amen. Well, kids, that's for today. And uh, next week, or whenever we get back together again, we'll go into part two of Gideon and see how the Lord really used him.